Chinese watchdog has accused America of ramping up cyber attacks over the past year, and a top U.S. official now seems to be calling for more. How will this affect relations between the two global powers when they're already strained by the trade war? Meanwhile, China will soon implement new regulations to govern the engineering of human genetics. What impact could it have on this controversial field? Welcome to The Point, an opinion show coming to you from Beijing. I'm Li Xin. Is cyber warfare a heightened source of friction between China and America? Recent years have seen the U.S. accuse Chinese hackers of aggressively attack cyberspaces in China, charges that Beijing denies. Yet a leading Chinese non-governmental cybersecurity watchdog has reported that last year, some 3.3 million computers in China were controlled by some 14,000 Trojan or botnet servers originating in the U.S., nearly double the number of servers from 2017. So what lies behind the reported U.S. Offensive and how might the Chinese respond? Joining me for the discussion in the Beijing studio are Professor Rick Dunham, a former White House correspondent and co-director of the Global Business Journalism Program at Tsinghua University, and Zhao Hai, a research fellow at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. Gentlemen, welcome to the show. First, a little bit of background about this organization that did this report. This is uh, an, an organization called uh, CNCERT. It is established to, in 2002. It's a non-governmental organization of but network security technical coordination. So, as I said, 3.3 million Chinese computers were on the Chinese mainland were controlled by more than 14,000 Trojan or botnet servers in the U.S. last year. Mm -hmm. That's a rise of 90% compared with the year 2017. Plus, 63% of malicious code targeting China comes from the U.S. Um, how serious a problem are we looking at, Rick? Well, we've seen a major change since Donald Trump became president. Even before the tariffs went on a year ago, uh, the Trump administration had decided that this was a one-sided war, that the uh, Chinese government or Chinese government inspired attacks on um, American government or corporate targets uh, were far in excess of what the U.S. was doing, and they have aggressively, some might say, too aggressively responded, and you can see there's a massive increase. Uh, difference between uh, what happens uh, from China out in, uh, in cyber warfare and the U.S. out is, in the U.S., there's some government uh, involvement, uh, whether it's NSA, CIA, FBI, uh, Defense Department, others, but there's also, there are also private hackers. Uh, in China, there's, I think there are less of these freelance hackers uh, mm. than there are in the United States. Okay, Zhao Hai, what is your take on the situation? First of all, whether it is a defense or offense from the, from the part of the United States, and second, the mix of uh, government-led hack, uh, hacking or uh, private hackers. I think only from this report it's hard to tell what uh, uh, is that defensive or offensive in nature, but uh, from the rise, particularly 90 percent of the attack, uh, shows that there's more activity at least from the U.S. based uh, hackers. Uh, as Rick pointed out, there are government-led uh, operations and there are uh, private hackers that are uh, uh, doing malicious uh, you know, things uh, for their own business purposes. So I think we have to differentiate. That also shows the imbalance of reporting uh, on the global stage. I mean, Western media focused on how uh, cyber attacks originated from uh, either Russia or China or whatever, Iran, but they never reported how much attack is coming from the outside, particularly from the U.S., towards Chinese uh, you know, infrastructures, uh, computers, and uh, computer users. So I think it's very important for this organization, a nonprofit organization, to uh, uh, verify and authentically reporting what's happening in China and uh, I think we need to pay more attention and also we need more of this kind of reporting mm. to reveal the extent that uh, Chinese uh, cyberspace have been intruded or has been exploited uh, by outside users. Basically to have a better understanding of the big picture, right, mm -hmm. uh, to have another piece of the puzzle. Um, according to the same report that there are actually quite some substances there and I read through, for instance it says uh, 3,300 
IP addresses in the United States, up again 40% from the year before, planted Trojan uh, virus in 3,600 websites on the Chinese mainland. The United States topped the list of overseas sources of cyber attacks targeting computers and websites on the Chinese mainland, according to the organization. Um, again, are we talking about the U.S. stepping up responses to alleged Chinese you know, government-led massive cyber intrusion in the United States? Or uh, is there the possibility as well that there are simply just more U.S. hacking taking place against China as, uh, I don't know, as, as China becomes more important or as China is seen more as a rival or as relations between the two sides become more strained? Rick? Well, the answer to your question is yes. And it doesn't really matter if it's responding to something that happened in the past or not. Let's just look at where we are today. This report pretty dispassionately states where we are today. And you can look at websites where you can see the hacking that's going on. I mean, it, it's pretty amazing if you, if you have access to the websites to see coming from one country to another. Um, I think something we keep in perspective, yes, China's being targeted uh, by the Trump administration, but others are being targeted too. Uh, there's there's a relatively new disinformation campaign involving Iran that's going on. I think that the Trump administration has chosen certain countries and targeting them. In the Iran one, there were, there were even uh, fake accounts being created to spread disinformation, and some of it was uh, innocently picked up by US, U.S. media, not knowing that these were uh, fake people created by the Trump administration. So I think it goes beyond this kind of cyber espionage to disinformation and other use of the cyber world. And there seems to be this understanding that uh, China has been the one or the side that has been actively trying to intrude in, in the U.S. cyberspace. But let's not forget all the uh, root DNS servers come, are hosted in the United, in, uh, mm. United States. The U.S. has the largest capacity mm. right, to spy on other countries and to carry out these uh, cyber activities. Does it make it easier? Just you know, on this matter per se, technically, for the U.S. to hack into other, other countries' uh, websites? I think the increase of activities from the U.S. side perhaps speak to one fact, that is China's increasing its cybersecurity defense. Uh, from two years ago when China, uh, when the cybersecurity law came into effect, China has been paying more attention to cybersecurity and has been adopting more um, methods trying to protect the cyberspace. I think before, China's cyberspace is quite open. I think there's no, probably no need to have more of that kind of uh, intrusive measures to get information. But now, I think the U.S. needs to increase their um, uh, using more tools to get into Chinese cyberspace. Mm -hmm. And secondly, I think if you look at the report, they're talking about the Trojan uh, uh, malware and also the uh, uh, botnets and the, those kind of things are laying the foundation for attack. So basically there are sleeping cells and backdoors that when they were woken up they could, uh, uh, you know, giving the, uh, having a system, systemic attack uh, to the computers or to the servers. Uh, but that means, you know, they are sort of preparing for the cyber war but not really launching it at this point. Uh, Rick, what is your take on that? Because the cyber warfare it sounds like a very sensational term. Are we already seeing some kind of a cyber warfare happening between at least the US, United States and China, or it's still at a dormant stage? Uh, well, I, it's both. I, mean, I, I, th I think that, yes, the, the whole idea of these, uh, this, this malware is to have it so that you can activate it at some time in the future. I mean, zombie computers from hell. Uh, so that that can disrupt things. I mean, you know, good spy work is something that nobody talks about on TV uh, mm -hmm. because we don't know what's happening. No, no. Mm -hmm. uh, although we do know that the Chinese is stepping up some kind of a right. deterrence, some kind of capability to to defend uh, any possible scenarios. And the Chinese President Xi Jinping said in a speech on cybersecurity in April 2016 that the country needs to build and perfect cyber defense and develop its own cyber deterrence capacity. Uh, mm -hmm. Zhao Hai, help us mm -hmm. understand a bit better what this cyber deterrence could possibly mean and where we are at this moment. I think there are a couple of things. Uh, number one, China is increasing its cyber defense 
capability by uh, combining agencies into uh, a more comprehensive and uh, authoritarian sort of uh, agency uh, so that they can gather information and try to process uh, the attack information more quickly and respond more quickly. And secondly, President Xi uh, emphasized the importance of having more talents, uh, learning and uh, uh, innovating and having more defensive mechanisms uh, put into place. Mm -hmm. So it's very important for the programs put into place so that people can learn more about uh, the, the reality of cyberspace and how to uh, innovate and try to have more tools in their hands. Yeah. And thirdly is to uh, having more companies to help the government detect the, the attack and have proper response to those of, uh, attacks, meaning that they could, uh, they should disrupt the source uh, of attack and try to uh, help, you know, prevent those things happening and protect the cyberspace uh, yeah. in China. Actually, according to this report, it seems that uh, these measures kind of uh, already become uh, were effective. I mean, a lot of uh, uh, incidences were, or a lot of dangers were. Um, eliminated or prevented from uh, creating real damage to the system and to the interests of Chinese companies or the state. And yet, looking ahead, the report highlighted several uh, concerns. For instance, uh, targeted attacks on specific um, destinations seems to be more and more. Uh, the nation's key information infrastructure uh, is, needs to be further protected and the safety of personal information and import, important data also needs to be uh, further uh, protected and, and the, the security issue related to 5G and IPv6. So looking ahead to 2019, Rick, what kind of situation are we likely to see now that the U.S. has been exposed, U.S. hackers have been exposed to have launched much more attacks on Chinese websites? Are we going to see an intensification of I, Yeah, I think, I think th those are clearly uh, targets, and they would be targets of Chinese hackers against American or Indian or other, uh, other uh, sources around the world. Uh, I think what you see is largely what I would call a cat and mouse game where the technology has improved and uh, you defend it and then the cat try, uh, try, uh, tries to find another way around to, to catch the mouse. And I think it just will continue to be that way. Uh, China will improve its defenses, the United States will improve its defenses, mm -hmm. but then uh, people who want to break into the systems uh, will look to try to find, find ways. I, mean, I think that right now the key is the defenses have done very well, and uh, and so they're challenging the uh, the the outsiders who 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 want to hack into the systems. I will say one thing in the United States that has been weak is pers protection of personal information. I mean, there recently was uh, another uh, case uh, in involving the U.S. government of uh, information uh, be being uh, being hacked. And in most cases, we don't know who does it. We only know the government reports that mm. uh, private information has yeah. been hacked. Um, White House National Security Advisor John Bolton said Tuesday that the U.S. intends to engage in more offensive operations in cyberspace to mm -hmm. counter hacks from U.S.'s usual suspects, China, Russia, Iran, and so on. Some analysts believe that uh, it suggests the U.S. is launching a cyber war towards Russia and the so-called adversaries. Mm -hmm. What's your take for the situation ahead, Zhang Hai? Well, to me, it's sounds less like a, a legitimate response to whatever outside pressure, but more of a justification for the U.S. to go out there and take more offensive action against others. I mean, in the cyber uh, kind of world, the activity is, like Rick said, rarely shows the real uh, people who's behind the scene. So when you don't have a concrete evidence to point out who's really uh, the offender, then how can you launch the attack uh, to the offender, right? So many, in many cases, if really U.S. go through with uh, what uh, Bolton has suggested, it might be the U.S. using unilateral ways to, yeah. again, attacking other people's, uh, finding whatever excuses well, they can find. That's, that's not very new anymore. I think <laughs> actions based on allegations is, uh, seems yeah. to be what we have been witnessing over the past period of time. All right, many thanks to my two guests, Rick Dunham from Tsinghua University and Zhao Hai from the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences.